welcome out to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yi. I'm Chris Yi. And today we're going to be talking about our Gen Con's top 10 most anticipated games. That's right. So Gen Con 2022 is, uh, by the time this posts up, it's going to be this week, right around right, the corner. Right, right. Uh, this video, you'll notice, is sponsored by The Op. They're sponsoring our Gen Con coverage, so make sure you go check out their booth there. they got plenty of games for sale. They're also going to be demoing uh, Marvel Dice Throne, which I think is really good. We gave sure. it a very good review here. Uh, and so go check that one out. That's a fun, easy one to just jump into, do a quick matchup with someone, and then you play the game. It's quick and easy. Yeah, they've got like Thor and Scarlet Witch. They've got some cool stuff in there. But we're not here to talk about demoing games. We're talking about purchasing games. That's right. Something we're very bad at. <laughs> I, Us particularly. <laughs> I, I We don't purchase a lot of stuff. So it was kind of fun to look at the Gen Con preview on Board Game Geek and see like, what, what are we actually interested in? Because there's a lot there. Yeah, what do we want to play? What are we excited about? Whether or not we ourselves purchase them. Right. But some of these on here, I'm, I'm very, very, very tempted by, especially as we get closer to number one. That's how these lists work. Uh, so 10 through 1. Is there a particular way that you formatted your list? I think I just kind of shot from the hip and said, like, hey, this is how I'm feeling in the moment. Like, Okay. I think by as you get closer to number 1, it's both something that I'm excited about mixed with I think I will genuinely like it. So there's a couple on here that I'm curious about and I'm excited about, but I'm not like, hmm. as you get close to one, I think that it's both excitement and I bet I will really like this one. I'm really hoping I'll like all of the ones on my list. Of course. But so, I mean, there's that. But sometimes you have that more solid feeling. I've got a yeah. feeling that it's going to be a good Gen Con. So let's go ahead and jump over to our number 10s here. So I'm going to start uh, my number 10 a game that I'm most anticipating from this coming Gen Con is called The Green Team Wins, or just Green Team Wins. What about the blue team? Forget the blue why, why team. Are we green hating, team, baby. Why are we hating on the blue team? So it's green and orange team. This is a party game where basically you're asked a question, there's a group of people around the table, and my understanding is you want to be in the majority team. So there's cards that have, uh, you can see in the picture here, there's cards that have three options, two options, or a fill-in-the-blank. And so it sounds like... Something like this, a party game that's fairly derivative, I think we've seen games that are like this. Pick the most common choice, or don't pick the most common choice. This one is pick the most common, but I like that little twist of the cards are all going to function just a touch differently, and so I feel like that's going to add some in-game variety mm -hmm. to what's already a very simple premise. So, I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, we'll see how it we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, yeah. There's some very light games on this list, but you'll definitely see some crunchier stuff as we kind of get going along. I think I'll like this one, but I'm excited to try it. Uh, some we'll people see. at Dice Tower East were playing it, and they look like they're having a really good time. So I've heard some some positive feedback already. Awesome, awesome. Well, I will be on the blue team. <laughs> good luck winning. <laughs> All right, my number ten is Nicodemus. So this is a follow-up to, what is it, Imaginarium, which I have not played Imaginarium. Now you have. I have, yes. And um, this this was the weird art is what caught me. If you look at this picture, like, I don't even know what that creature is. But the weird art looks really cool. What's not to like? I love, How about I love that, the that gears swan going on. teapot kettle thing? Oh, oh yeah, totally. Swan teapot. Um, but anyway, so this is a, a tableau machine building game of some sort. I kind of have no idea if I'm going to like it. But I hope I like it. It looks very cool, and I definitely want to play it. Um, even just looking at those cards, looking at the, you know, there's cubes going on. I love cubes. If there's cubes in a game, it, like, automatically makes it more likely that I'll like it. It's like if I decided, if I had to choose between cubes and miniatures, it would definitely be cubes. Oh, sure. But if you had to ch choose between swan teapot kettles and regular teapot kettles. It would be swan teapot kettles, okay. obviously. I can see why you'd like this one. No, I, I enjoyed the original. And I think that a, a focused little two-player version could be really good. Bruno Cathala tends to do good with this type of stuff. And we do a lot of two-player games at our house. So that's, that's true. That's what I'm excited about is number 10, Nicodemus. All right. Let's go ahead and then jump to my number nine. This is a trick-taking game uh, called uh, Wicked and Wise. Where are you taking that trick to? What do you mean? The store? I'm going to take it to the, the limit. The Take it to the limit. The Eagle. Oh, you wouldn't oh, okay. know. You're too busy with your swan kettles. So, hey, don't dis on my swan kettles. Wicked and Wise is a trick-taking game. It's from Weird Giraffe Games. I tend to enjoy their stuff. They haven't really had like a big breakout standout game, but I think that all their games are good. And this one seems like this one seems like it could be really something special, where it's a trick-taking game, 
players are different dragons, or you're a mouse and you're trying to ride on the coattails of the dragon, basically, and you're kind of throwing cards in to help them, it sounds weird. It sounds very it sounds very different, so I'm excited to play this with a group of people. There's a lot of people here at the office, actually, that quite like trick-taking games, so I think this will be cool to be able to try out in a setting where a lot of people already know trick-taking basics, and it sounds like you're going to throw some really weird extra stuff in there. Uh, cool art, cool theme, cool everything, so wicked and wise. I'm not sure if I'll like it, but I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy trick-taking games, too, so it'll be interesting. Also, I'm trying to imagine a mouse riding on a dragon, and I don't understand the physics of this. It's like never-ending story. We're good. We're good. Story. Oh, I, I forgot to move the slide over here. Oh, pictures. There's cards. Also, the cards look quite nice. They're the art looks great. Bright so. colored. Yeah. So There's that's some coins going on. So that's my number nine. Wicked ampersand wise. Nice. Okay, so my number nine is my father's work. This is a review that I just just came up earlier this week. Tom Bassler reviewed this, and he gave it a very good score. Very much liked it. Um, and so basically the theme behind this, from what I understand, is that they're your generations of making like Frankenstein-like monsters. And you're trying to pass that knowledge down generation to generation to generation um, so that you can make better, nastier monsters. I don't know. I don't better, know nastier, nastier monsters. monsters. Yeah. I like with, it. With more uh, plugs in their necks. That's, that's my plan. With more Stein. But I think that there's mechanism, and I, I don't fully know a lot about this yet, but I think there's mechanisms where, like, people can riot. Like, you can have an uprising, and they can, like, ruin you, and so you have to be like, oh, well, this generation had a rough time with the people. They didn't like our monsters. <laughs> but maybe next generation they'll be a little more accepting. Um, but anyways, it I've heard really good things from people about it. I don't know a ton about it, but I'm super excited because thematically it sounds very interesting, and... Um, I, I trust Tom on, on a lot of games. Especially something this long. He said it's very is, long. That it's surprises in, me. And if it's engaging while being that long, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Also, Frankenstein is acceptable to say when referring to the monster. Bride of Frankenstein is never referring to the scientist. So, before you comment on that, we're good. Are you sure you're not Frankenstein, the scientist, and I married you? I'll do what I want. And now I'm the bride of... I'm going to be the bride of Chris Yee. I'll do what I want. My number eight, let's go ahead and jump to that, uh, is Carnegie. This is one that has already come through the office, but I haven't got a chance to play it yet. I think that this is a fulfilled Kickstarter that's now going to be available for purchase at Gen Con. I really like a lot of the stuff that Pegasus has put out so far this year. Uh, I mean, First Rat is so good. The big box of Port Royal and stuff. But Carnegie is one that I'm really excited for. It has kind of a business type uh, growing, developing your business, different departments that you put people into and make them work. Uh, and then also there's a map and you want to control different areas and move up tracks. It sounds like a recipe for success. Tracks, maps, business kind of theming. I tend to like that stuff, so, I mean... Maps, money, and more. Maps, that's money, what, and more. Order. No, I, I was really excited about this game, too. It didn't make it on my list, but it's it's on my extended Gen Con yeah. list. Yeah, we're going to play this one soon. We'll finally get around to playing it because... Yeah. I really like the sound of it. So my, my number eight, Carnegie. All right, my number eight is Kites. Now, this is a little cooperative real-time game, um, and it sounds like it's going to be hectic, kind of like Magic Maze, where you got lots of stuff to do. Um, but it, it sounds like you're playing cards, but you have to play certain colored cards before timers flip over, and so you're trying to time that just right because you never want any of the many timers to run out. Um, it sounds like utter chaos. And um, I think that there are plenty of people out there that are going to hate this game, but I think that it's going to be one for me. Immediately upon this picture, people are like, I'm out. <laughs> but I'm one of those that's in. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one sounds like it'll be good. I don't know if it'll be better at lower player counts or better at higher. You know, and so yeah. I, and I like seeing that type of dynamic. I wonder if you can talk in this one. Yeah, that's a question. There's so many games where there's limited communication. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this one is or not. Yeah, I have no idea. Anyway, so that's my number eight is Kites. Let's fly away on to uh, the number seven. All right. That uh, works for me. Uh, my number seven is Brazil Imperial. Brazil Imperial is a game that I've demoed. Only the first age. There's three I don't know ages the counts to the now. game. Throw oh, it off sure. the list. Done. What's your new number seven? <laughs> but Brazil Imperial is, is really cool because it's very simple, small actions on a turn. Uh, there's a map in the middle that you're competing for, but I, it's it's built as a 4 or build, I should say. It's, it's kind of sold as a 4X Euro game, but I feel like the extermination, the fighting X, is it seems like the smallest part of it. It's mostly about really smart, smooth action selection, 
and developing and building a tableau of powers and upgrading your actions and stuff. It's what I imagine the next ages are going to be are pretty cool. And it doesn't seem like there's going to be a ton of fighting. Hmm. There might be as you get to the end of the game. I don't know. But it seems like something that you and I would have fun playing head to head. Because you tend to enjoy... 3X games. 3X games. Yeah. You tend to enjoy the building up and growing. And, and, and the discovering and the... Yeah. Yeah. And those elements seem to shine in this. And so I'm excited to see what else is going to come in the in the second and third age that I haven't played. Uh, and so I'm really excited about this one coming out from Portal Games. So cool. Brazil... Imperial, which I keep calling Brazil Imperium. Mm. There, there's enough Imperium games. There's that so I'm, many Imperium games. I'm really messing this up. Imperial. So. Imperial. Brazil Imperial. Imperial. Fill in the blank. L'Oreal. Right. Im- Maybe Ooh. you're born with it. Yeah, yeah, I was. Mm-hmm. Totally. Cover okay, all. my number seven is Cat in the Box, which is different than Cat in the Hat. Um, I'm not a fan of that movie. That storyline, it's not... I don't know. I didn't grow up with Cat in the Hat. I grew up with other Dr. Seuss books. That's what I'm saying. You like the movie, but do you like the book? No, I don't like the book. Cat in the Hat is a terrible creature. All right, your number seven is disqualified. All right, well, my number seven is Cat in the Box, which apparently cats do sit in boxes. I now understand that. I don't know if that has to do with this game, though. So this is a yeah. trick-taking game. This is another Tom Vassell recommendation that is on my list solely because he liked it. Um, also trick taking games, like Chris had said, like we both like trick taking games. I'm very interested in this. Um, but Tom liked it enough that he sleeved it. And I think that that says a lot about a game. So I, I don't know a ton about this, but there's something about playing cards. And as you play them, you determine what color or what suit they are, something interesting going on with that. And so, um, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit different than your typical, like basic trick taking game with a bidding system. Um, so I'm excited to see where we go. I like that idea that no cards have an innate color. You select the color when you play it. And so, I don't know. Like, well, I'll see how that works because my mind is not wrapped around it yet. Sure, sure. But yeah, it's yeah, also... So... Uh, uh, I was going to say, it's it's the uh, Schrodinger's cat I, I, illusion, I think. But also, that's what I thought. But also, is it? I think it's just a cat sitting in a box. You're right. It's cute. You're... It's got a little paw sticking over the edge. It's you're, adorable. You're onto something here. When I first learned how to draw dogs it was like a little over the box kind of thing with the dog paws and he was like peeking out when i first learned how to draw a dog it was a big oval straight line legs and then i gave up at the head because it's confusing okay that's fair if i try to draw a real dog he always turns out weirdly proportioned right anyways four-legged animals are not my thing my number seven was cat in the box speaking of weirdly proportioned animals my number six has nothing to do with that it's called movie mind this is a party game that i don't think that you're gonna enjoy at all is the movie getting into my mind? Uh, it's about guessing movies based on clues, based on drawings and oh, stuff. I'm out. And also uh, some clues like some, or like questions written on cards. I I like Okay, let me see if I can stuff. get this one. Well, there's like ten of them usually mixed into each picture. Oh. Uh, I, th- I think is what it says. So I'm I'm excited about that because one of the things I do on a daily basis is I, I play a wordle, but then I also go to a website called Framed which takes movie mm. frames and you try to guess the the film in six different pictures. I like that stuff a lot. I'm not I wouldn't call myself a cinephile because I'm not a pinky up person, but I'm I'm a movie buff. I enjoy knowing things about movies even ones I haven't watched necessarily. Oh, this is that movie where this cultural reference comes from. Oh, this is the movie with, you know, these actors and stuff in it. So I think that I'm really going to like Movie Mind. You are surprisingly good at that app. I am like, pretty surprisingly good. Surprisingly good. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty good. So I'm I'm hoping I'll do well at this game. I'm hoping this game is fun. My number six, Movie Mind by uh, Gigemic or H- Hachette, I believe. My guess is Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. It's a big like kraken. Nailed it, nailed it. All right, my number six is Terracotta Army. This is a new board and dice game. Um, I tend to like their games, so I feel like this is a shoe in on my list. Um, there's not actually a shoe on my list, though. I'll make sure that that's clear. That's um, fair. I've checked. There's not. <laughs> so this is this is a Euro game, um, and it's it's based in I don't know that terracotta army theme time period. But you're trying to line up and create. I don't know. Is it a store of them, or you're just trying to create the army of them? And you're building columns and lining up things. You've got these cool different pieces that you place out, and somehow scoring is involved with that. So it sounds like there's some puzzliness to it. It sounds like there's a little bit of positive interaction because we're all placing out on the same grids. Um, and so I'm, I'm just excited. Also at Dice Tower East, multiple people played this and they said that they really liked it. 
So I, I yeah. think that I've got a lot of recommendations going for this game so far. I think that it resides in a weight between Zapotec, which is very light and simple, mm -hmm. uh, and like a Teotihuacan. It sounds like it's, you know, I mean, it's it's about halfway between, which that sounds like a great... It sounds like a really good sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, and it looks striking, it looks good. I think it was the Qin Dynasty, I believe, but I don't, I don't remember... Sixth grade world history I class. I am offhand. sadly very uninformed on all of this. <laughs> so <laughs> let me just let me just put my ignorance on the table. Okay. Oh, I forgot to show the components there. So hey, yeah. here's the components in the grid that you put. Yeah. So the grid is in that upper right hand area over over yonder. All right. Cool. There you go. Hey, sorry about that. Let's go to my number five then. Uh, my number five is a bigger, epic kind of sounding Euro game. It's called Stroganov. Uh, this is one that was also in my most anticipated games of the year list. And I'm, I'm holding out hope that this one's going to be really good. Uh, I've heard some people say that I'll really like it. I've heard some people say that mm, I might not. And it might be more player count dependent, so... Why not? I'm curious. I tend to like in games where there's a lot of, of little micro uh, resource management. I'm going to turn a few things in to allow me to do this uh, and to, get a, to be able to then pay for this bonus action and get this free reward from it. So... When you play those types of games of four players, though, you know what I mean? That oh, feeling of just sitting that watching. Oh, that slog. Yeah. Okay. So we play a lot two players. So I'm holding out hope that this is still great two player. I like the setting. I like the theme. I like the art, the presentation. I love the designer, Andreas Stenning, who did, um, who did, uh, 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 um, what, what's the ugly cube game that we really like? You taught it. Hansa Teutonica. Hansa Teutonica. Yeah. Same designer as Hansa Teutonica. So I'm hoping that this is another standout, really great Euro game. That's funny because I look at the art on the cover and I think the cover looks really cool and I look at the art on the pieces and I go, oh, those people look really bored. I'll probably like this game. <laughs> so, um, yeah. At least the Ooh, bored people are not on the box this time, right? That's true. The dude on the box looks like he's going to get killed. Right. <laughs> uh, who knows? All right. My number five is Gartenbau. Um, this is a really pretty game. So I actually... Um, Someone had a copy at a retreat last year, and I uh, helped them punch it out, but I didn't play it. So oh. I don't know. It was just kind you of You punched out this game? <laughs> Disqualified. This game. Get it off the list. No, but uh, I'm it's, at. it's really pretty, and I really enjoy theme the theme of flowers and gardening. And so it sounds like you're, you're laying out these tiles, and you're trying to... Uh, basically, you're putting seed packets out, and you're laying out more tiles. And you're, it sounds that kind of like puzzly in front of you building up stuff you're you're trying to meet lots of objectives but I'm sure objectives probably overlap and so the more ways that you can be like oh I can beat these four objectives with this like one tile I placed mm. perfect I, I really enjoy that kind of stuff right yeah and it sounds like you're laying out tiles to then lay tiles on top of those tiles mm -hmm. and possibly even a third layer I, I like that that sounds like a good hook seed looks good flower or plant bloom I don't know I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't but know what I really like the art too. This. Really, really love it. All right, that's a cool pick. Uh, my number four, moving along here. This is uh, this is possibly the closest to a cheat because uh, this is Sky Mines. Sky Mines is the follow up, the re theming, but also a bit of a renovation on Mombasa. Uh, mm. People have said, "Why wasn't this one called Moonbasa?" And I absolutely agree. So uh, you'll so notice there's a co-designer name on this box, though, uh, Victor Kobilki. And so I'm excited to see what that means because the f there's two sides mm -hmm. of the board. The front side of the board is pretty much just a reskinning of Mombasa. It does look very Mombasa-like. Very much so. The back side of the board, instead of mining on the moon, you're mining on asteroids. And so there's more breakup of the masses that you have to travel between to actually kind of conquer and take care of. Not conquer, but, it, it, but you know, uh, take possession of, have the different companies leading out. Are they player player count dependent? No. Or it's are they a, just like a different, mode. just an alternate map? Okay. Yeah, but maybe it's better at the lower player count. Some people complain. I like Mombasa too, just fine. I yeah. think it's very competitive and getting each other's head and stuff. Because it's not just my, um, it's not just my company or region or whatever that's expanding you're not expanding the orange all player. of them yeah. yeah yeah you're not orange there's an orange company and we can both kind of invest in it i love everything about mombasa but the theming here is sounds even cooler and i'm hoping it sounds way better uh so i'm hoping that this is going to be a good good second follow-up version of it 
Sky Mines, my number four. All right, my number four is a uh, planet unknown, and there's a lot that I don't know about this planet, but it it has ha, ha, tracks, ha. and you look like you're placing stuff on planets. You want to move over to the picture? I sure. Um, am. Yeah, you've, you're moving up tracks, and you're putting stuff on on a board, and <laughs> little tiles and grids, and I like all that stuff. Also, the lazy Susan. You can't see it in this picture, but there's like a lazy Susan of pieces that can spin around and holds all the nice different shapes and stuff, which looks really cool. Um, but it yeah, really I mean, cool. I mean, it just, I really enjoy tile laying stuff. And so if you add tracks to that, I, it just seems like, it seems like a grand thing. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know a lot about this one either, but I feel like I should. I've heard good buzz about it. So. Yep. So that's Planet Unknown, my number four. All right. Uh, my number three is an expansion. This is a long awaited expansion that's finally coming out. Uh, You've been talking about this forever, if it's what I think it is. Okay, yeah, so this is the oh, Crusaders. Right. Yeah, the, the, the Divine Influence expansion. This is one that, uh, uh, unfortunately, Tasty Minstrel Games uh, went, uh, went under. They went out of business, and they had a lot of games that have now been sold off to other companies. Uh, so Renegade Games now has uh, the Crusaders Thy Will Be Done uh, game, and they are now releasing the expansion. I am so stoked about this. There's very little information out there about this expansion, very few pictures, so here's the back of the box, right? <laughs> um, it looks like there's an addition of buildings and four different variable player power factions that you can be. Hey, that sounds great, like an expansion that hopefully doesn't overwhelm and overshadow what's good and smooth and slick about the game, and instead just gives you a little bit of extra stuff, some different building types to build. Awesome. I like the sound of all of that. So. I'm hoping that this is great. I'm hoping it'll fold right into the base game very smoothly. And I tend to teach this game a lot. Uh, I tend to be introducing it to lots of people because they haven't... I feel like this one doesn't stand out as much as it should because I think it's so great for like a 45-minute game. It's a very cool It's a very cool little mechanism of that rondelle that you're moving your pieces on or that Moncala, whatever you want to... Yeah. Want, want to call it. Um, mm -hmm. But that's very cool. But I think that what you said is like the 45 minute game length on this really surprises me every time I play it. It's got a lot of depth and it feels like you do a lot and it's also fast and quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping this expansion folds in and isn't too complex. Maybe I'll even be teaching this to people with the expansion. Maybe not. Uh, but if it, hey, if it's just for me, then it's for me and I'm excited about it. Is for you. All right, my number three is Stroganoff as well. So we uh, have our first crossover here. Oh, okay. Took a while. Um, yeah, the dudes on horses, cubes on boring looking pieces. It just it just makes my heart happy. It really does. I mean, look at that lady at the bottom. She's just like, I don't even know what she's doing. She's like, hmm. So um, anyways, <laughs> I'm clearly selling it to everybody right now. Uh, but I, I do. I really enjoy a lot of that Euro stuff. It seems like there's some interesting stuff going on with resources. I don't know a ton about it, um, but it looks like my kind of game. It sounds like it very likely is. We'll see about like what you said with it come to like the amount of like AP time as players wait around for their turn. Uh, but I'm, I'm thrilled to play it and I hope that it's great at too. I really hope so. I mean, and you joke that this this looks like a game for you. We're not big aesthetics people. We're this not. looks like a good looking game for you. I think it's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So let's go to my number two now. Turing Machine. This is by <laughs> Scorpion Mask, who are the who's the company behind Decrypto, one of my favorite deduction ish kind of games. You know, it it's Decrypto is like a party game for not a party. If, if you know what I mean. It's very thinking cerebral. I'm hoping that Turing Machine is also cerebral. How it works is you take three different punch cards that have different holes punched in them and you overlay them and you're trying to glean some information about a certain number of clues and you have to solve all of the clues around the center of the table in order to crack the code and win the, win the scenario. And the mm -hmm. way that it's made sounds absolutely brilliant to me where you can put any combination of the clues that you need to solve in the middle of the table, and there is an answer. Really? I don't understand the the, the math engineering and the math behind it, but it sounds really cool. You can play it solo, you can play it cooperatively as a team. Maybe there's a competitive version. I think it's cooperative, but it sounds really good. Hmm. The They were showcasing this. They were showing it off at Dice Tower East, and even the box has holes punched into it. 
It looks really cool! So I'm like, super excited about trying Turing Machine. I think I'll like it a lot, but also it's super exciting that it's just off the wall and off the beaten path a bit. Did you, have you ever actually used like old floppy disks and these old style of programming? I've never used a punch anything? card. I mean, I went around when the ENIAC was around, but <laughs> but yeah, I mean, my elementary school was decades behind and we had like the five and a half floppies, you know, and, and all of the, the Apple IIEs and stuff. We, it was kids. okay, yeah. <laughs> but even for the 90s, that was, you know, a, was a, a bit outdated. <laughs> All right, my number two is a winemaking worker placement game that is not viticulture. It is Dom Pierre. Um, and so that's that's what I had to say about it, basically. It's a worker look placement that, game with wine. Look at that cover. It's got Dom de Luis that on there. That guy looks super jolly happy. So jolly. But then also this guy on the other side looks like um, uh, Clark Gregg, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He looks like Phil Coulson. So Old got, man Phil Coulson. Yeah, Dom DeLuise and Phil Coulson hanging out. This That's a yeah, winning combo hanging out, there. hanging out with their wine. Um, it it gives me a lot of viticulture vibes, but also it clearly is its own game, and I'm excited to see what comes and what makes of it. It's funny that this is on my list and not your list, because your top ten themes, you had alcohol making or alcohol production on it. Yeah. And so it's interesting that this is on mine, not yours. Um, but I think it looks really cool. I'm excited just to see what all those spaces do and all that stuff that's on there. I really should look into this one more. I don't know. Like I, this one looks like an older game on just on the cover. So maybe I, I I let that influence me. Even though visuals usually don't. I'll try it in a heartbeat. I don't know. It just didn't quite make my my ten list though. <laughs> well, so. I'm excited about Dom Pierre. We'll see. We'll see how it is. All right. Very good. Hey, we're going to number ones now. So, Ooh. Uh, for for me, my number one is called Catherine: The Cities of the Tsarina. This is a this is a game from Capstone. I like a lot of what they do, uh, but sometimes they make games that, that are a, a touch too large and, and feel unwieldy for me. I think Crystal Palace was that way. It just kind of felt like a lot. But when they when they they do really good when they bring it down just a touch, and that's what this one looks like to me. I mean, Capstone games obviously are they're on fire with Ark Nova. Uh, and they have a lot of successful games. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about this one because it looks like a card-activated kind of combo type of uh, system of a game. It doesn't look like it has a large footprint. It looks pretty straightforward. You connect cities, you move up tracks, you combo cards together. It sounds like it's 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 almost like a small like a smaller footprint game that has a large amount of decision space and. Uh, things that you can work with. So I'm very, very excited about it. And I think that this is this is probably the game that I'm most likely to just like walk around and, and like accidentally have exchanged money for goods and services and walk back uh, home to, you know, with, with it under my shoulder. You know what I mean? Interesting, interesting. Well, my number one is also Catherine, the Cities of Tazarina. Oh, okay. There so you there you go. I think it's, uh, it, if you don't buy it, I probably will, so... That happens. Um, oh, all right. Well, well think, darn. <laughs> so I enjoy this idea of like building routes on maps and stuff. It, it, it gives me vibes from a lot of games that we've played in that regard. Um, I think what's interesting is there's a simultaneous card selection in this. Yes. And that, I think, sounds really interesting because, um, like we'd mentioned with some other games, um, that, that wait between turns sometimes gets long, especially if it's a very thinky game and we're spending a little too much time thinking on our turns. Um, well, and if so, I exchange two for one, then I can spend this one in a three for one. Yeah. yeah. Like, just go! We, we both do it. And <laughs> luckily we do it similarly. So uh, um, so I, that idea of like a simultaneous thing happening, that means that there's less downtime. There's more time that I'm working and you're working and we're picking together and we're thinking at the same time. And I appreciate that. All right. Very cool. So that is our uh, our top 10 anticipated games that's coming out from uh, from Gen Con 2022. That's right. If you're there, the Dice Tower has a booth. Come say hello to us. The Op has a booth. Go check out some of their games. And then, of course, uh, you know, we're saying that these ones might be interesting. Maybe you'll like them, too. There's a huge list of games. Huge list of games. If you want to go on a BGG and look up uh, anticipated games for Gen Con. Yeah, their, their, their Gen mm -hmm. Con preview... Uh, is a fantastic resource, so uh, props to them for putting that together. Definitely. And we benefit from that as well. So uh, thanks to everyone in, for coming out. If we haven't mentioned a game that you're excited about, tell us about it and maybe uh, maybe convince us that we should go uh, pick that up instead of Catherine, the Cities of the Great Zarina. You mean as with? 
No, I'm instead. Dead. I defy you. I mean, if you can convince us to buy something instead of that, you you go for it. Instead of the game that we're both most excited about. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks so much for coming by uh, this Dice Tower Top 10. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Yeah.